It's James here with another episode of In the Van with James. Right now, we're sitting here in the downtown core of lovely Vancouver, British Columbia. Beautiful day for it. You've noticed I've I've taken my hat off. I only take my hat off for one thing, and that's the beginning of spring. And today feels like absolutely the beginning of spring. Why don't you follow me around Vancouver while we talk about how to price things when you're selling them. So this is a marketing video, I guess you'd say. Everybody asks me about how do I price? How do I price? What price should I give? I'm not gonna give you the actual prices, but I am gonna tell you some techniques for figuring out what your price should be. So uh, let's put her into drive and let's get going. So a lot of you, might not know the history of engraving in the world. I'll give you the very brief history of engraving. Once upon a time, people used tools like hard stone to engrave away softer things like soft stone and wood. Uh, then uh, we invented things like the, uh, the chisel using metal to engrave away things or perhaps uh, just a, a little scratchy pen. So then, uh, through many changes in technology, 200 years ago, somebody came out with the pantograph. Uh, if you don't know what a pantograph is, uh, there's one right here. Uh, you see this little beauty? Uh, we had to put brass font in the tray. We had to line up our part, uh, get it all lined up nice, and then this brass font we would drag with a little stylus and then it would scratch the name on there. Setting up this brass font was a lot of work uh, and buying the brass font was very expensive. So people charged a lot of money to set up these engraving jobs because the setup was incredibly hard. Don't mind my bouncy back here. Uh, the Vancouver streets are a little bit rough. Uh, so next. They came up with perhaps a, uh, a computerized engraving machine, which allowed us to use a, a computer to do all that font work that we were doing with the brass font. So now it made it a little easier, but we were, we were programming in DOS, so we could never see what we were engraving. So we switched to the modern style computer scratch engraver. And this is one where we place out our art, we put our tool paths on and then we engrave. So this was a lot easier because we could see what we were going to engrave before we engraved it. The setup time was a little bit less, but still, you know, that type of engraving is a little bit cantankerous at, at times. Um, so then the wise Austrian engineers created the laser engraver, the Trotec Speedy. Uh, this was fantastic because now we could just print whatever we wanted onto whatever we, we wanted to print it on. So the setup times got even less. The thing about the, you know, the low setup time is that people start to think, hey, if the setup time is only five minutes, I'm only going to charge for five minutes of labor. This is very, very, very wrong. What we want you to do is we want you to charge what you'd be charging putting the brass font in and engraving it. This could take a lot of time for setup. So I would love everybody to start thinking old and acting new. You think about the brass font, yet we engrave with a laser. Setup charges have to be there. Setup charges will make you more money. Setup charges will allow you to buy more laser engraving machines. Everybody also wants to be the uh, highest quality engraver at the lowest price for the quickest turnaround. And uh, they want to advertise this so that they will get all the work in their city and nobody else will have any, any work to do. But it doesn't work like this. You see, there's a little triangle and lots of you probably already know this from sort of business acumen. Uh, you'll see the, biz the business triangle on the tip of the triangle, we have the highest quality. Over here, down below on the triangle, we'll have the lowest price. And then over here, 
we'll have the quickest turnaround. Three points. Pick two, because that's really all you can do. You can't really do all, all three. Uh, there's no way you can do it. It's just, if you have the best machinery in the world and you spend a lot of money on machinery so that you can get the highest uh, or the quickest turnaround um, with the highest quality, then your price is going to be higher. And it should be higher because you need to afford this machinery. Um, so you, you have to pick two of those. That's really Im important. So that gives you the ability to say, okay, if I'm spending this much on machinery and I'm doing it this fast with this high quality material so I can be the very best looking and the quickest service in the industry, how much does that cost? You put your, your, your setup charge in there, made like an older engraving machine, and you put in your premium for being able to update, upkeep, and buy new equipment to do your work okay three-point triangle so another good method of finding out how much you should be charging is calling around to a competition now some people think this is real cheesy but it's done everywhere all the time believe me everybody that does it uh, get get used to it um, you got to know that some of the quotes that you've given out over the last year uh, and they never got back to you Chances are that's probably one of your buddies in the industry trying to check up on what you charge for X, Y, or Z. Um, this is a good process because we need to know what the market is. Just calling around, seeing what your competition is char charging. If you want to do that, just send a quick, quick e email. I need a quote for, for this. Don't involve the people too much. Don't waste their time too much. Just try to get... A, a, a quick price on something just so you can get a, a sense of what you should be charging please don't undercut undercutting uh, trying to undercutting equals trying to do all three points on that triangle it hurts you you're gonna be working till three in the morning it hurts your competition there's lots of work to go go around uh, everybody should be making money not just one person okay we're all friends here <laughs> so what I'm saying ask around also what you can do is ask your friends ask your friends so you make um, I don't know you make a business card holder out of bamboo okay ask your friends what would you pay for for this and they'll say you know X Y whatever they'll say something ask them what they would pay ask your friends ask your family what would you pay for for this this will give you another sense of how the general public feels about your product that you're making um, then you can add that to your list of, of what you should uh, be asking or charging for this. there are other people who forget about the cost of the machine first of all so they will buy their machine and then after a few months they'll forget how much they paid for their machine wouldn't that be nice um, and they will start to charge what they think the product's worth so for example a name tag let's say they're selling name tags well a name tag blank is worth about 15 cents to buy and to engrave that we'll say it takes 30 seconds to engrave a logo and a name into a name tag let's call that 83 cents if you're running the laser at hundred dollars an hour okay 83 cents for the engraving and 15 cents for the, the, the blank. And maybe you're buying a magnet and the magnet's costing you, let's say a dollar nine, okay? So that's a total of about $2.07 each. Um, at $2.07, uh, maybe you're bumping that that up to a dollar. So you're like, well, I made money on the, on the $100 an hour for the, in engraving and that's maybe I'll make another extra dollar and I'll charge three dollars and seven cents per name tag you're forgetting about your laser cost I always look at what a laser cost to lease and I put that as a factor in every job that I would have done back when I had my shop so when 
I did that. I was always saying every job I do is putting money away to purchase a new laser. And we know how much you want a new laser, for sure. Um, so you got to charge what the object is worth. So is somebody gonna buy uh, name tags for $3.07? You bet they will. They'll buy them by the droves. Uh, are you gonna be spending all night uh, putting magnets on the name tags and not spend any time with your family? You bet you will be. Believe me, I've done it and it's not fun. Uh, charge what the product is worth and then this industry continues to be a very, very lucrative business. Um, I'm not going to tell you what a name tag should be worth. Go around and call your local name tag guy. Uh, whether you're in Canada or whether you're in South Africa, United States, England, Austria, everybody's selling name tags. Go find out what they're, they're worth in your market because it, it could be different everywhere. And use a spreadsheet to really bring all of your costs into it. Really take time to think about which costs are involved. Keeping the lights on at your place, um, buying new equipment, whether it's a laser or a new UV printer. Uh, you know, keep your expenses on there, all your expenses. Maybe you, you spend time driving to Trotec to get yourself some material once a month. Put those expenses in. Get a real sense of what it costs to run your business and put that as a factor in each of your pricing schemes. This is a great way to um, not only just stay in business, but thrive, to really thrive. You have to get a number for things that are going to make you money. And if you have the best quality in your area and you can offer a turnaround of three days, my goodness, you should not be the cheapest engraver out there. You really, really should not. So again, we check with friends and family. We check with our competitors. We always charge a setup charge because in the old days, they charged a lot for a setup charge. And we make sure we've accounted for all of our expenses when plotting our pricing. So I've just left Vancouver. I'm on my way back to the Langley showroom. I'm going to travel through Burnaby. Listen, guys, it's such a pleasure doing these videos, and I love hearing your comments. I love answering questions. If, if there's something that I said that doesn't make any sense or you've got a better way of doing it, please put it in the comments. Everyone would love to hear that as well. Um, I'm not perfect, but uh, I would like to hear... You know, I would like to be corrected so I can be perfect one day. I want you to leave those comments down below here, okay? And I also want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know you've been putting it off every time a new In the Van with James video drops. You want to be there to, to be the first to see it. And so I want you guys to subscribe to the channel so that you're going to get those alerts. Um, and then we'll keep bringing you more and more of these things as we travel to different parts of BC. Ciao for now, guys. Stay cool.